Hi, Fabio. Hey, boss. How's it going? Good. What are you doing? It's a nice t-shirt. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Love it. I've been crazy this weekend. I have so many ICUEG, so many new hookups, and I'm really freaking out because I don't remember any of the new ACNS terminology for ICUEG. Oh, this is tough. Well, I think we should uh, bring in an expert. The person who really spearheaded creation of the standardized terminology mm -hmm. Uh, is a fan of our show. Oh, nice. Who's that? He might be able to get him to come on. I, he's very famous, and uh, but you know, he before him, ICUEG was chaos. Oh, wow. Now, because of him, mm -hmm. three iterations in at least, I think it might be more, we have the very perfected terminology. And if we could get him to come on, your confusion will evaporate. That's a good, that's a good idea. Let's do it. It's that I hear, by the way. That's a new intro. That's a new intro. So, oh, look, it's Dr. Hirsch. Oh, my goodness. Welcome, Dr. Hirsch. Fabio's stuck on some ICUEG. You know, he doesn't want to use the wrong terms. He wants to be consistent. Uh, and I, you've done a lot of work on this. So what, what's the history of this standardized terminology? Ah, well, it started in uh, about the 1800s when I was first attending ACNS <laughs> meetings. Yeah. Uh, That's when my it... great grandmother was reading EGs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, really, it started with about seven or eight of us going to dinner at an ACNS meeting and deciding we needed to figure out what to call all these patterns because everyone was using totally different terms and none of us had any idea what to do about them and mm -hmm. which were bad for the brain and which weren't. And uh, the next time it came around um, and it became a clinical guideline of ACNS. So that was published in 2013. Mm -hmm. We wanted to expand it even more. Actually, this is where we uh, got a lot of Europeans involved. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently published the 2021 version. So you see we have a much longer list of authors, including mm -hmm. some guy named Westover is in there somewhere. Oh, no, I don't believe anything in this one then. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't let him influence it at all. <laughs> no, that's, that's what the uh, this symbol here which means. We di didn't allow any influence. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one added a lot of things that people asked for, like ictal and rectal continuum, and and to include seizures. We actually did not include a definition of seizures in the mm. prior one. So, so. cool. Well, teach yeah. us about it. I think we we should be yeah. using this. We use this at all at all ages except neonates. There's a separate neonatal terminology published, uh, but probably doesn't work great for infants. Um, and it's actually pretty simple. There's just two main terms, main term one and two. And the only thing that changed with this new version is we added unilateral independent. Mm. Okay, so everything mm. else that people who learned the old one, you don't have to forget anything. Everything you learned was still there. Yeah. No, no change in their meaning. You didn't waste all your time. And you only have to learn one more term, which is pretty uh, self-evident, unilateral independence. So, okay, so main term one is where the pattern is, like mm -hmm. you just mentioned some of them. And then main term two is is the actual pattern itself. And that's all divided into these three, periodic discharges, rhythmic delta, or spike and wave. And the third one is much less common than the first two. Mm -hmm. uh, and the main difference is periodic discharges have a break between them. And this is kind of the formal definition you can see here. It, it can be quantified, so a computer can do some of this. Um, but the, really, the difference between periodic and rhythmic is whether there's a break in between. If there's not, it's rhythmic. And then spike wave is a very specific alternating pattern of a spike, then a wave, then a spike, then a wave, also with no breaks in there. All right, so here's just a diagram of what periodic means because there's a break between it. And then you take those exact same discharges and shove them together with no break, and you end up with this. Mm -hmm which is rhythmic. And then this is the alternating spike wave. No breaks. Okay, Fabio, how many times in a row does it have to alternate to count? If you have two or three in a row, is that enough? Or how many do you need? I think you need like 43. <laughs> 42 is the Oof. number. 
You were close. Divided, <laughs> divided by seven. Oh, okay. Six-ish? Six, exactly. Okay. For all these patterns, you have to have six waves in a row for it to qualify. Exactly six. Yep. So if you have five rhythmic waves and that's it, it doesn't count as being okay. a rhythmic right. pattern or any, any of these patterns. They all require six waves in a row. All right. So rhythmic Ooh. delta, these are some mm -hmm. examples of what they can look like. So the classic rhythmic delta is sinusoidal, but it doesn't have to be. It can be much more like real life where there's some other frequencies and bumps on top of it. Mm -hmm. So this is still rhythmic because you got six waves in a row mm -hmm. at, a, at a regular pattern. Mm -hmm. It can be sharp on one end and not on the other or arcaform. Mm -hmm. um, but note that this bottom one, there's lots of delta waves and some of them are big and slow, but it's not rhythmic because you got it. It's very irregular. Mm. So that well, I, is that that has three terms that are all used equally polymorphic irregular or uh what's the other one arrhythmic uh, yeah that's it thank you non i wasn't even quizzing you that time <laughs> <laughs> that's when i get things right when people are not quizzing me yeah so those are all kind of the same thing polymorphic uh -huh. irregular so on the first example the top the complex delta wave um could, could that, that because there's so it's so irregular in the delta wave, could that be just irregular slowing? How, how do you tease that apart? Um, well, there can be some lower amplitude irregular stuff on top of your rhythmic delta, mm. but you still have rhythmic delta. So the predominant pattern here is this. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's always some other little bumps in irregularity in real life, and they're never perfectly regular. If it's perfectly regular for an entire page or more, you got to worry that that's actually a machine artifact of some kind. Mm. Yeah, like a demon trying to make you call the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, the old demon artifact. That's a, that's a tough one to, yeah. to identify. Maxwell's demon. All right, let's see what, what's next. Oh. That's just your nice summaries. Yeah. That's really, yeah, that's like most yeah. of the terminology. Nice and simple, right? Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have some real examples. In real life, then, Dr. Hirsch, you usually start with main term one, and then you try to see if it's generalized, if it's lateralized, and so forth, and then you try to tease out main term two, and then you, you go forward. Is that your algorithm? Not necessarily. I might start with main term two, but I definitely start with these two main terms. Okay. Which order? I don't know. Okay. Before the... I think oops. you just kind of immediately recognize them after a while at the yeah. same time. Yeah. yeah. Although sometimes you'd be like, oh, I'm not sure if it's generalized or more on one side consistently or not. So then you just first figure out if it's periodic discharge was RDA and then mm, um, okay. concentrate on it. So I will, I will make that point with lateralized. It doesn't mean it's only on one side. Uh -huh. It just means it's, it's just clear that it's more on that side. Okay. So if, if uh, the way I think it was everybody, if everybody in a room, if you got 10 people and they would all agree which side is more prominent, then that's a lateralized pro problem. Okay. Okay, so it's not strictly unilateral, and then there is a separate modifier of lateralized that says unilateral mm -hmm. or uh, bilateral asymmetric, mm -hmm. but they all fall under lateralized. As long as again, as long as it's clear which hemisphere is maximal, then it's a lateralized pattern. Got that? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we have all these modifiers, which are just defined into you know specific categories, so everyone's using the same terms and. Hmm. There's no rocket science here, but uh, let's let's get on to some pictures. Ooh, nice. nice. All right, so I think all these are uh, left parasagittal and right parasagittal, then left temporal, right temporal, and then, then midline. Um, so yeah, so here's a, a nice example of periodic discharges in the left hemisphere. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter that you can see it a little bit on the right. These are still very well lateralized to the left. So these are lateralized periodic discharges. Mm -hmm. They're actually a little slower than one per second. So they're like 0.75. Mm. And these and are these were pleds, right? Because there's some, some attendees that still call them pleds. So same thing? Yeah. So I like to say is some people pronounce LPDs pleds. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the old name was periodic lateralized epileptiform discharge. It seems to be the, a disease of the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> Geriatric EEG. It does. It does. <laughs> uh, but they don't have to, the, the reason the E got dropped is they don't actually have to be epileptiform. So, some of these maybe like this is too long and too blunt to call it an epileptiform discharge, but it's still clearly a periodic discharge. Mm -hmm. And they're still pretty highly associated with seizures, even if they're blunt.
So, so for LPDs and nurturers, they don't have to be necessarily less than 200 milliseconds. If they're periodic and they're kind of like discharge looking, you can still call them LPDs? Correct. I didn't know that. Good hmm. point. Yes, these can be just delta waves as long as they're periodic. Huh. Doesn't matter what's in the actual discharge. That's why there's no E in LPDs. Hmm. Okay. Got yeah, it. that's an important point. And truly, if you look at the old literature on herpes and cephalitis, you'll see a lot of that are these big, long lasting delta waves. Sometimes they're a whole second long, mm -hmm. but they're periodic and still highly associated with seizures. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question. That, that is a, a good point that people don't realize. The discharge itself does not have to be sharp. And there's a modifier for that blunt, sharply contoured, sharp, or spiky. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, they can be blunt. Cool. Yes. All right. So similar montage. Mm -hmm. like we, we dropped the channel probably because the artifact the FPs are gone. These mm -hmm. are not synchronized. There's no. Yeah. There's I LPDs don't. on both sides. Mm -hmm. but could it be uh, just propagation? I never know if it's actually two foci or it's propagation from one side to the other. All right. That's a great question. So if it's like, look at this one, for example. So here's one on the right and it's followed pretty quickly by one on the left. So could that be propagation? So mm -hmm. if that were the case, then each one of them would have the same pattern. It's true. Makes but sense. you can see here, there's a long delay before the next one. And mm -hmm. some of them, uh, it's even the other order. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they're not, they're not time locked. If they are time locked, then yeah, it could be one propagating to the other. And that's actually LPDs. That's lateral aspiric discharges with a, a modifier of bilateral asynchronous. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting advanced. And that's actually only in the new oh, do not. It wasn't in the old. There is um, no so time. yeah, if they're time locked, you can't call them bilateral independent, right? So they can't be BIPIDs or BIPDs. They mm -hmm. have to be independent. But this one, you see they're going at different frequencies and one of them has no relation to what the other hemisphere is doing. Mm -hmm. So these are bilateral independent periodic discharges. So this would usually be someone with uh, injuries on both sides of the brain? Yeah, they have multifocal or diffuse sometimes it's hypoxia sometimes it's yeah but yeah it means something's wrong on both sides and there's potentially epileptic focus on both sides mm -hmm. okay i have a question though so if it's bilateral independent is it multifocal it is multifocal but not by the definition right well it's bifocal bifocal so okay. to be which isn't the term used just bilateral okay. independent okay. Um, but multifocal means you need at least three different foci and it has to be at least one in each hemisphere uh, so you need to find a different place within the hemisphere so uh, all right so here's one see everything's nice and synchronous and time locked and they're all over the place so uh -huh. it's a classic generalized pattern and they're periodic uh -huh. So this is a classic GPDs. Probably an. And what do you think? Oh, I was just going to ask. Oh, that. I was going to. I didn't hear yeah, that. I bet this is a patient with an anoxic brain injury because of uh, flat EEG between the discharges. Yep, exactly. Uh, let's see what's next. Ooh, this is a rare beast. Yeah. So I'll just pick one channel to make it easier. Uh -huh. Just, just look here at F three C three for a while. Okay. So you see a little sharp wave, then a slow wave, a sharp wave, a slow wave, a sharp, a slow, a sharp, a slow, for six in a row. Mm -hmm. So that makes it the wave. I can wave. Yeah, or sharp, sharp wave counts also. It doesn't have to be spike, it can be yeah. a sharp wave. So this is a sharpened wave. Generalized sharpened wave. It looks pretty generalized. Yeah, I can't tell you which side is more. Okay. Cool. So this would be. Gunshot one, no, TSW. It's not gunshot <laughs> one. Generalized sharpened wave. Okay. It does not mean they had a gunshot wound. They could have. It but... is possible. Hmm. Mm. They're not time locked. Lots this of one. hmms. Yeah. Is this yeah, LSW? correct. So, yeah, so we got this. Uh -huh. Well, it's periodic discharge. I'm not sure I would say there's an uh, yeah. SW there. Just periodic I think, I think discharges. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, there's a break, but there's uh -huh. a uh, probably a little background in between these yeah. discharge, then a background. So these are most the best term for this part here would be periodic discharges, and it's very well lateralized. It's just on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then there's this other thing here, yeah. right in the midline, right at the vertex. Yeah. It's also periodic. You'll take one, two, three, four, five. Frequency. We got six, much slower. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got two of them. Two on the same side ish. Yeah, well, this is where you have to set oh. one of those arbitrary rules where we count the midline as being on the same side. I see. So this oh, is the midline and something that's on, on one side. This is repids. Very well pronounced, I is think. Right? Lipids, it? unilateral, independent. Periodic oh, lipids. UIPD. Nice. So those are the new ones in the terminology, right? Exactly. That's the yeah. only the only new main term is unilateral independent. Okay. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's next. Hmm. This is Fabio's favorite. <laughs> so it helps that there's three different labels on here. Uh -huh. uh, there's this pattern here. Oh, is it also a good example of just blunt, just blunt things, but periodic? Yeah. So this still counts as LPDs. Oh well, yeah, back to to the point you made. Just kind of even though they're blunt, right? Yeah. These yes. are blunt LPDs, pretty slow. Okay. Yeah, and then you got another much sharper one going on here at F four, yeah. the other side. Other side. Yeah. And then you got yet another. Mythids. So yeah, so this one is. Uh, the other point is, if this is a nice spike in wave each time, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter because there's a break between them. It's still periodic discharges. Okay. You, don't, you don't call it SW. But okay. take my word that there's three more coming after. So you have six that qualify. So this is periodic discharges, and it's multifocal. Uh -huh. Nice. And only, only Dr. Westover can pronounce that. If it's, <laughs> I, oh, wow. Cool. Nice. Oh, Dr. Kowalka is actually from Brazil. There you go. From my yes, land. Yep, from my land. This okay. is an international pattern. <laughs> happen to any There's another connection I have with Dr. Caboclo. Uh -huh. His hospital is named after someone with the same birthday as me. <laughs> do, do you know which hospital he works at or center? No. It's, it's Albert Einstein. Oh, cool. In Sao Paulo. Yes, yeah. and Albert Einstein and I share uh, birthdays oh, cool. And, cool. and nothing else. Do you have <laughs> Albert Einstein's brain in, in your basement? or In my uh, head? <laughs> well, in your head. No, you know you know what his birthday is? It's actually a mathematical day. Is it April fourteenth? It's it's Pi Day, three point one four. I mean, Mar yeah, March fourteenth. You were a little dyslexic with your Pi. Dyslexia, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, so 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 far, if we have two foci, it's going to be either unilateral independent or bilateral independent. And if there's three, and one of them is on the contralateral side, then it's automatically multifocal, right? Right. Okay. Cool. If Got there's it. three on one side, it's still just unilateral independent. You know, you don't get a special name for that. Okay. All right. So this pattern, question is, is there a rhythmic or periodic pattern? Well, there's probably it. there's something going on here that's pretty regular. Mm -hmm. And like you a... do have some sharp stuff here. Maybe it's periodic, but here it's just a rhythmic pattern, right? There's just this going through it. And the rhythmic patterns there the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I would probably go with rhythmic delta activity. Certainly, if you look in the temporal lobe, that's a great example of rhythmic delta. Regular, no breaks between them. So this is rhythmic delta. What do you think? Is it lateralized, generalized? Yeah, lateralized. Lateralized. Yeah. Left. It's clearly on the left. And what do you think these asterisks are for? Oh, those probably just are added in by a person. I bet those aren't cerebral. <laughs> <laughs> is that the COVID? Uh, that the is COVID? true. It's, <laughs> those are not, uh, not little coronaviruses. <laughs> <laughs> those are <laughs> little sharper spikes. Yeah. So like, this is this is getting into one of the plus um, S. important modifiers of the plus, right? So this is an example of plus S because they're superimposed sharp waves. Mm -hmm. Can also just be because the rhythmic delta is sharply contoured, which mm -hmm. it's not. It's not really here, but because of these little sharps on top of rhythmic delta, this would be called lateralized rhythmic delta activity, plus S, nice. L R D A plus S. Okay. You can also have plus F. I mean, you have superimposed fast frequencies, mm -hmm. um, but it has to be there only when the pattern is there and not just in the background. So you need mm -hmm. to see a time when. The pattern, the RDA or periodic discharges are not there and see if that fast activity is there. Okay. Mm. Mm. Now, here's a pattern. It helps you have two boxes. 
Um, but it, first note the montage. So this is a, an average reference and the yeah. left hemisphere is on the top half and the right hemisphere is on the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this box is showing this rhythmic delta from the right frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And this box is showing rhythmic delta from the right temporal lobe. Oh. You can see this one That's is, the same is significantly slower than this one is like one and a half hertz. This one's really one hertz. Mm -hmm. Sounds similar, but it's clearly a different frequency here. Well, here's really two this hertz is here. Ulerda. So unilateral independent Lerda? Uh, yes, but don't put an L in there because the unilateral Weird independent that. becomes main term one, and the second term oh, is just RDA. Okay. That's true. So weirda. C U I D A. Uida. Uda. Weirda. Unilateral weirda. independent RDA. Weirda. Okay. Weirda. Or you can this just is... call it weirda. It's a weirda pattern. <laughs> if this it's is... a girl, if it's a boy, it's a weirdo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the uh, is that that's, Portuguese? That's pers actually. This is a fairly decent example. There's fast activity here, mm -hmm. but you also see that fast the whole time. Yeah. Even when here there's the RDA goes away, you still see the fast. Mm -hmm. So it's this is not a plus F. Mm -hmm. If there was fast on top of the delta and then all these faster frequencies totally disappeared mm -hmm. after the RDA went away, then mm -hmm. it would be a plus F. But mm -hmm. here it's just fast activity in the background. Okay. So that just continues while you also have rhythmic delta. Gotcha. So it's promiscuous. If it's loyal, then you can take it as a modifier plus. There you go. If you have a promiscuous weirdo. <laughs> that's, a, that's a male promiscuous <laughs> right. uh, pattern. Doesn't count. Okay. A weirda. Not nice. sure promiscuous made it into the terminology. We'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to uh, publish it with Dendron. And you could have you could have plus F and S, right? That it's possible. You can indeed. Weird us. Right. So you could have some sharps mixed in here and fast activity. Mm -hmm. If they're time locked to the RDA pattern itself, mm -hmm. then they'd both be there, right? Be plus FS. Oh, this this is this is just polymorphic slowing. No, I think it's already excellent. That's the whole point of this one. Well no. Nah. It's not rhythmic delta activity. So we, we, it's been shown by several groups that lateralized rhythmic delta activity has a pretty high association with seizures. Mm -hmm. In one paper that we did, it was actually exactly the same as lateralized periodic discharges. About 60% had seizures during that acute admission. Mm -hmm. um, but polymorphic delta, like this, mm -hmm. not rhythmic, not regular, not monomorphic, those are all the same meaning. Mm -hmm. um, it, it means there's something wrong there, but it has nothing to do with seizures. Okay. Just means there's something structurally wrong there. So mm -hmm. this is polymorphic, arrhythmic, or irregular delta, and is not RDA. So I, I do see a lot of times, especially if it's really slow, like one hertz slowing, people just call it rhythmic, even if it's not rhythmic at all. But that's not correct. It's, and this is a free advertisement for. Oh. The new edition of our atlas is in press now. Oh, cool. Not quite available, but very soon. Yes. Uh, just showing more examples of pretty yeah. prominent focal slowing in the temporal lobe here, but it's not rhythmic. This is all polymorphic irregular, not even close to rhythmic. So don't, okay. call, don't call this RDA. Okay. 